Hey, this is Paolo from the NBA Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna be making basses like the ones in the track Shaolin Fist by Serum and Original Sin. So, this is the original track. <laughs> And this is my recreation. There are five faces that we're gonna make in this video. We have a lot to cover, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. But don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. If you wanna get access to all of these presets and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. And don't forget that if you're gonna get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists, and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just gotta visit dmbacademy.com. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so we're gonna begin with these two bases. These two layers. So let's begin with this layer. Okay, so here I have an initial ace patch, which is playing a low D sharp. And the first thing we're going to do is to get a sine wave on oscillator A and a complex wave table on oscillator B. The reason why is because we want to have a bit of a growl movement thanks to all of these harmonics added in this wave table. So if we play this, you can already notice the <laughs> type of movement. Then we're gonna turn on the sub and the noise. And we're gonna map another fold into the level of everything. We're gonna map on the level here on oscillator A and also on the sub. And also on the noise. Let's bring the level of oscillator B all the way down and the reason why is because we want to run FM from B. Just like that. Let's set the telephone trigger and put it on eight notes. To, to, to. Just like that. Let's add six voices of unison on oscillator A. Just to have more stereo with because this is a layer after all then we're going to filter all of this with a bandpass filter the reason why is because this bandpass filter can give a movement like that to the low harmonics so let's just map and level here and then you can fine tune the movement however you want then we're going to route the filter through the noise there you go then let's go into the effects and we're going to add distortion. We're gonna add chorus, high pass filter. There you go. Then we're gonna add a multiband compressor, increase the release. And then we're gonna add another filter. We're gonna add another band pass, just like this, and modulate the cutoff once again. And this is our bass inside of Serum. Now let's jump into some post-processing. So the first thing for post-processing will be adding noise. Then we're gonna add an EQ, and with this EQ we're gonna have a bell that moves just like this, just to add a bit of extra movement. Then we're gonna add saturation. And then we're gonna have an EQ, a notch, filtering this second harmonic, leaving a bit of the sub, but filtering this second harmonic. Then we're gonna have another saturator. And then we're gonna have one more EQ, boosting the highs. So if we layer this with the other one, this one is kind of a dirt layer for the other layer. So now let's jump into that one. All right, so here I have another initialized patch. And we're gonna repeat the same principles as the other one. Sub, noise, and a complex weight table. So let's map LFO number one here. Or maybe what we can do is we can have a different LFO, like LFO number two, and map it here on LFO one. Then set it on trigger, make it half bar, and now we can have control over how this wave table changes over time. Like that. And it's a separate control different than, for example, level four number one, modulating everything that creates volume and thus adds rhythm, like this. Now we can shape the tone evolution of the sound, which is pretty useful. Then we're gonna turn on a bandpass 
set our own band pass 12, and once again modulate the cutoff. Add some resonance, and boost the drive. Browse the noise through it, and now go into the effects tab and repeat the same thing. Distortion, chorus, compression on multiband mode, add release. Now let's go back into the Oslier tab and let's remove the random factor of the face. And leave it maybe there. And now for post processing. And now for post processing, we're simply going to repeat everything we did in the other base except for this EQ. So now if we layer those two. We have that. So in context. Awesome. So now let's jump into the next base in the sequence, which is this one. First, I'm going to show you the MIDI. It's D, F sharp, D sharp, D. Then we have D, D sharp, D. So let's create it. Okay, so here I have another initialized patch. We're gonna once again turn on soft and noise. We're going to bring the level all the way down of the noise and also of Oscillator A. We're gonna shape those with an LFO, maybe LFO number one. Make a shape like this so it wobbles. We're gonna set on trigger and maybe have a bar. Just like that. Set this also to the noise and mix the sub a bit lower. Okay, and so now we're gonna play with these two oscillators. First, we're gonna boost oscillator A two octaves up, and we're gonna change it into the basic shapes. So we're gonna bring the random factor all the way down and put the face all the way down, and repeat this on oscillator B. Let's modulate this level right here. And let's boost this one four octaves. Now we're going to route this through a filter, for example, MG Low 24. And we're going to map this LFO into the cutoff right here. Hold Shift and Alt to make it unipolar. And then fine tune the modulation. Then we're going to use the drive knob and put it all the way up. And now we have a setup of three main harmonics, a sub, one two octaves up, and one four octaves up. So now if we go into the effects tab, we can add distortion. And that will add every harmonic in between those. Then we're gonna add compressor. And just clip it inside of zero. Add release. And then we're gonna add another filter to control the dynamics of this sound once again. So let's map LFO number two here, set on trigger, half bar, and then once again create another shape. Maybe this time it'll be something like this. Of course you can always experiment. That's cool for me, and now let's jump into some pause processing. Okay, so for pause processing, the first thing is going to be adding an EQ. The main thing that I want to do is to get rid of this second harmonic, which is too loud and feels very muddy. Then I'm just boosting the highs, and then we're going to have an OTT. And then to boost around 700 Hz, we're going to add another drive. Then we're going to add chorus. And then we're going to add another EQ. And next, we're going to filter off the sound once again. Like this. And then we're going to add another OTD. And then we're going to add an erosion. Just for noise. Then we can go back into Serum. 
and just fine tune the levels, for example, of the sub, of the different layers, like this. We can fine tune this filter. Awesome. We can maybe set this one on multiband. And fine tune the distortion. So, if we play this in context. Awesome. So now, next we have this sound. It's very simple, so let's just open the serum and see what it is. So basically what this patch is, is just a sine wave. And then we layer another sine wave, like this. We put that sine wave one semitone up, so it starts cancelling itself. And then we put it 100 cents up, which would be two semitones. And then we just pitch it around. For example, we can put 12 semitones of range and pitch it. And that's it. There's no post pressing there's no effects. That's it. So in the arrangement, the curve looks like this. And I just boost it in the mix. And that's it for the bass. And now the last bass to cover is this. Then the original sounds very similar. So let's create this one from scratch. Okay, so here I have an initial patch. And we're going to now begin with two sine waves. One on the sub and one on the A. Then we are going to boost this one four octaves up and five semitones up. And then we're going to run everything through distortion. And this is basically a tonality that we want of the sound. If it was just four octaves, it would be like that. But this is the kind of the harmonic that we want. Then we want to map LFO number one into the level of this oscillator, and then set it to 16 triplets. Make it a stabier shape like that. And then we want to change this modulation level. And that is what makes the sound. Uh, so I couldn't find a proper way to do this other than just going to the matrix and then mapping a different LFO here. Uh, for example, LFO number two. This is an auxiliary source. And based on the position on LFO two, this output level is going to change the automation intensity per se. So if we make it a rising shape like this, that will be very similar to what I'm doing with this movement right here. So let's just set it on one bar and set it on trigger. And then let's fine tune it. There you go. That sounds cool. And now let's go into the effects and let's add another filter. And then let's map this into the cutoff of this filter. And that's it, that's the sound. So if we now play everything in context. That is our final result. So that is going to be it for these sounds and also for this video. If you liked it, make sure to get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any future videos. And if you want to get access to this preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. Don't forget that if you want to get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs. You just got to visit dmbacademy.com. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.